I'm Steve McKenzie. I'm an interior designer here in Atlanta, and we thought it'd be fun to take you on a tour of homes that are on the market right now and share with you what we would like to do. Today, I'm here with Allie May, and Allie, welcome. And tell us about this place and tell us about yourself. Sure, I'm Allie May. I'm with Atlanta Fine Homes, Sotheby's International Realty. Today, we are in a community on the west side of Atlanta called M West. It is an industrial gated community. It's a really popular neighborhood and it's very urban and hip and close to so much that Atlanta has to offer. I am so excited about the space. It's really a neat community. It's fun to be here. And it would be a fun place to move in. You know, every time I go anywhere, I always think, what would I do if I moved into this? And I could see myself living here. It's very exciting. And oh, I yeah. love the West Side. But tell us a little bit before we get into it, do you have any rules of thumb? If someone buys a home, what they should spend on kind of the hardscapes updating? Sure. Um, I'm just curious. Sure. Yeah, I have a rule of five that a lot of my clients, when they see this, will laugh because most of them don't follow it. My rule of five is when you buy something, try to stay there for five years. I mean, unless you're an investor going in and flipping property and waiting two years to then sell it and you know exactly what you're doing to get the most equity, I really suggest that that five years will always bring you good equity. If you are planning on moving before then, try not to spend more than like 10% of your sales price on upgrades and design. Uh, once you get past that five year period, you can spend more like 25%. It's just a number that you don't have to strictly go by, but it's a number that'll keep your equity safe and you won't spend more than you have in the property. Sounds like a good rule of thumb, and that's probably what I was thinking about here. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, this kitchen. I think the bones of this kitchen are great for this industrial space. Um, I would only do a facelift, and I don't think it would cost even nearly 10% of the total cost, which would leave you some money for the bathrooms, perhaps, too. Mm -hmm. But all I would do in here, I think these cabinets, you see them everywhere in this color. It was really popular when these were built, and I would just like to see an update to that. And I was picturing painting the cabinets a dark navy. In fact, I've got a navy, it's called In the Navy, Ooh. by Sherwin Williams. I think it'd be really beautiful on here. And I think we'll just set a nice tone and bring some life to the, the space. Mm -hmm. And then I think I would replace the countertops. I've got a quartz here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of quartz out there. It's highly durable, which is really good for a space like this. Mm -hmm. um, it's great for families. And it's still got the veining, so it's got a nice natural look to it. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I thought I'd do is I like a little warmth on that maybe I think yes. a pole that's this um, satin brass would just be beautiful and bring everything together. I love the appliances. I would stick with the stainless. Mm -hmm. The backsplash I could go either way on, but because they take it up, I think it's a nice industrial look and I would just leave it. kitchen like this um, but instead of an industrial I like to play off that I'd like to find an interesting antique piece mm -hmm. maybe an old wooden bar from an old French bar or something that I think would be a really nice island here to use yeah I like that mix of high and low I think that's really popular because especially so many of my clients tend to inherit a lot of antiques and don't know what to do with them but they're really drawn to these contemporary spaces so I love that incorporation of it I do too. I like the mix. I feel like if you've got some old and some new, the energy created in the space is very different than if you just stuck vastly with only industrial. Mm -hmm. It makes it much too. more interesting. It gives it more personality, which I think is the trend of a lot of design that I'm seeing is that people you know, used to adhere to this is the year of all white or whatever it is. Well, I think what I'm seeing is it's the year of your own personality. Show your own style. It's much more interesting. It's going to be your home, so live in it the way you want to live in it. Mm -hmm. But I definitely would put floor-to-ceiling window, or excuse me, draperies here. 
I just think that would be wonderful. Kind of a neutral, linen-like fabric, maybe with a border of a leading edge. But I just think it'll frame this beautiful view out the window so perfectly. And then on this opposite wall from where we're standing, I would bring in an antique French armoire that was kind of big and put a TV in that. They're so available right now. People are moving away from them. But with this soaring space, I think it could be really gorgeous. But I would counter that with a very contemporary sofa where we are, some beautiful chairs. You've got actually enough space here to do two seating areas. I think we could have a couple of club chairs over there with a little quiet area to sit down, talk, read. But then here would be your main conversation and TV watching. And I just think the space is so versatile. There is so much you could do with this. No, I mean, I like that idea. It would really soften the hardness of the architecture. Yeah, absolutely. And these floors are beautiful, these pine floors. But I would put some rice down just to warm it up again. I just think it would make a big, big difference. But I just wanted to share with you what my vision would be for such a beautiful space. I think that sounds lovely. Thank you. Noah, thanks for joining us. And I hope you'll follow along as we talk more real estate in the future.